Okay, section two. Now we're going to look at the mean of a discrete random variable. And the first thing is we are going to let x represent the ages of eight students. And so I've given you eight different ages here. And first thing we, I would ask you to do is to just find the mean. So if you were doing this the way that we know how to find the mean, you would end up taking 18 plus 18 plus 21 plus 22 plus 22 plus 22 plus 23 plus 23 all of that divided by 8 so we would add them all up and then divide by the number of observations that we had okay when you add those up you end up getting 21 0.125 for our mean. Now, a different way we could look at this, instead of doing 18 plus 18, I could have actually written that as 2 times 18, and then my 21 would be plus, well, I only have one of those. My 22, I have three of them, and my 23, I have two of those. So I could have written it a little bit shorter like that, and I still would have came up with the exact same answer here. Now, go back to your algebra days, and when we have a fraction like this, we can divide them up into individual fractions. So I would have 2 18 over 8 plus 1 times 21 over 8 plus 3 times 22 over 8 plus 2 times 23 over 8. And I would still end up getting the exact same answer. So the next thing I want to know is how can I use these ideas and my probability distribution to get my mean without having to do all this addition and subtraction. So come back to this bottom one right here. And the 18 comes from our problem but where does the 2 over 8 come from? And where does the 1 over 8, and the 3 over 8, and the 2 over 8? If you look at our probability distribution, 2 over 8 is actually 1 fourth, which is 0.25. So when I'm looking at this 18 here, I could use my probability of 0.25 instead of having to do the 2 over 8. Now notice the 19, I didn't have any 19 year olds, they didn't even appear in my string of numbers, didn't have any 20 year olds, but now these 21 year olds, if I look at this 1 over 8, that's now really hard to see, 1 over 8 is 0.125. So I could have taken this 21 times the 0.125 and still ended up with this exact same thing right here. 22, I could have done the same thing with. I had 3 over 8. Well, 3 over 8 is 0.375, so I could have taken my 22 times the 0.375 and gotten this same piece. And I could have done that with my 2 over 8. That's the 0.25, take that times the 23, and I would have gotten that very last little piece. So what this is bringing us to is that the mean of a discrete random variable, which is going to be denoted by mu sub x, or just mu if there's nothing else that it could be confused with. Sometimes we'll be talking about more than one variable, so we might have like mu sub x, and mu sub y's, and mu sub m's. It's just identifying the variable it's going with. So it's saying the mean of our variable x. We can do this formula right here. Now remember, Sigma means summation. So this is telling us to take our x value and multiply it by its probability and then add those all up, which is what I was trying to show you from this last example. I could take my x value, my 18, multiply it by its probability and get this first piece. I could take my x value, my 21, multiply it by its probability and get my second piece then all I need to do is add all those up. So it's really finding the mean the exact same way that we learned back in chapter 3, but it's just a way to find it from our um, table. 
Okay, another thing to keep in mind is that the mean is often called the expected value. So if you think of it in terms of the lottery, it's saying if you buy a ticket for one dollar, what is your expected amount that you're going to win off of that one ticket? Um, oh, I did put an example. So if you're gambling and a ticket costs you two dollars and you had a 25% chance of winning four dollars, you would expect to win, well, 25% chance of winning four dollars, you would expect to win one dollar every time you bought a ticket. But now keep in mind, you buy a two dollar ticket and you only win one dollar. So basically you're going to lose a dollar every time you buy a ticket for this particular example. All right, page 220, example 5.7. This one is talking about bank tellers and they give us a um, discrete random variable distribution here and X represents the number of tellers that are busy with customers. So in that very far left hand column they tell us that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's the number of busy tellers. What they want us to do is they want us to find the mean of the random variable X. Well the middle column of that table for the example 5.7 tells us the probability of x equaling x. So our probability that zero bank tellers are busy is 0 0.029. Our probability that four bank tellers are busy is 0 0.212. So now when they want us to find the mean of that, we need to take each x value and multiply it by its probability. So we need to take that zero times the 0 0.029 and we're going to add it because our formula said we had summation and we're going to add it to one bank teller being busy times the probability that that bank teller is busy. Add it to the 2 times the 0 .078. So there's a 0 .078 chance that two tellers are busy. Three tellers has a 0.155 and four tellers is 0.212. Five tellers is 0.262 and six tellers is 0.215. So I would need to multiply each one of these out and add them all together. When I get my final answer I end up getting 4.118. So now we need to decide what does that even mean? Well, what that's telling us is that the mean number of busy bank tellers is 4.188. Nope, 4.118. So this is our, our mean number of busy tellers. Okay, our standard deviation. We've got this nice formula here for standard deviation should look somewhat familiar. We've still got the square root, we've got our x minus mu squared, and we have to times it by our probability that x is equal to x. That should be an equal sign right there. So we're going to do example 5.7 on page 220. So this time we're, um, we're going to find the standard deviation for the bank tellers. And what we first need to do is fill out our chart. I already filled in the x values. I filled in the probability that x equals x. Now we need to do the x minus mu. Well, we just found what mu was, so we have 4.118. So we're going to take each of these x values and we're going to minus mu. So I'm for this first one, I would have 0 minus 4.118. So negative 4.118. And then I'm going to take 1 minus 4.118. So I'll end up with negative 3.118. And go ahead and fill in the rest of the column. Okay, so hopefully you got the same values that I did. Now our next column says we need the x minus mu, that quantity squared. So right now we're taking care of this part of our formula. So what I need to do is I need to take my x minus mu here, so this negative 4.118, and I need to square it. When I do that, I should get 16.96. And 
and then I'm going to do my next one. So negative 3.118 when I squared that is going to be 9.72. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these. Okay, so that takes care of the x minus mu squared. Well now I have to take each of those values and I have to multiply it by the probability that x equals x. So I'm going to take my x minus mu squared column here and I'm going to multiply it by my probability part column. So in this first part I'm going to take 16.96 times 0 0.029. When I multiply those together I get 0.49. Second box, I'm going to take 9.72 and I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.049. And I would continue doing that all the way through. Okay, so right now I have got my x minus mu squared times my probability that x is equal to x. So I've got all those values figured out. Now if I go back to my formula, the summation tells me I need to add all of those up. So I'm going to go ahead and add all of them up. Add all those together and you should get 2.47. So right now I've taken care of the summation of my x minus mu squared times its probability. So I have everything underneath my square root here taken care of. Now all I need to do is take the square root. And the square root of 2.47 ends up being 1.57. So that's my standard deviation for this problem, which means on average the tellers that are busy are 1.57 tellers away from the mean.